Hi everybody, thanks for, for coming to another taping of So Fun for August 2022. Glad to see you all again. Um, are we ready for Christmas? Because I've got a few Christmas things for you and a few Halloween also. So we'll start with the Christmas. This is an embroidery design by Janine Babbage. Love all of her stuff. It's called The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. There are three different designs um, on here. Walking in the Winter Wonderland, Oh Holy Night, and The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. Um, you can make them into a wall hanging, a table runner, whatever you really like. But I love this little wall hanging hanger by Ackfield Designs. And so I made the Oh Holy Night um, for this. This is a pretty easy embroidery thing to take, do. It takes about 45 minutes. Um, I love all the swirls in here, kind of make it look like snow blowing around. Um, and then you just kind of sew your pieces around it and you have a nice little wall hanging. I put a little sleeve on the back so you can hang it up. What's nice with this is you can take this off really easily and use it again on different designs. Um, but I just love this little project. I think I'll probably end up doing the other two with some table runners. Um, but this is the Oh Holy Night by Janine Babbage. Then our next embroidery project is Classy Zipper Pouches by Amy Lee Scott. Um, who doesn't need another zipper pouch, really? So this has four different designs, four big embroidery designs and four small ones. I did the big butterfly, and look how cute this is. So it's all totally done in the hoop. So you put in batting in your backing fabric and an inside lining fabric. And it does all the back stuff. You take that out of your hoop, put it aside. Then it does the top zipper part and then this embroidery part. And then you line it also in the hoop. And then you put your backing on the top part and it's all done for you. Um, it took about an hour to do the whole thing so that's not too bad. That includes all of the cutting away for this part, um, doing your zipper and all that. One thing when you're doing your zipper, make sure when you are sewing the sides down that your zipper is open somewhat into the inside so that you don't sew the zipper head off, the zipper pull off and you don't have it. Also when you're doing it, if you're using, if you cut off your zipper because the ends were a little too long, don't slide your zipper all the way off and then have to put it back on again. It doesn't always line up. It takes you a long time to fix that. So um, put some pins at the end so the zipper won't pull off and make sure the zipper is in the middle when you do finish that last um, seam around it. But other than that, it turned out perfect. I just love the colors on it and it was really easy to make. So four different designs, two different sizes. It'll go great and you can have a lot of different gifts for people. Then. It's never too early to start about start thinking about gifts for your sewing friends. And Bonnie Hunter has these adorable playing cards. So this is the back of them. And the Joker card is Bonnie Hunter. How cute is that? Um, it says, I said to myself, I need to do something besides sewing today. Ha ha. So really cute, um, really cute cards. The, all the face cards have quilts on them. Um, but just a nice little gift for your sewing buddies, your book club buddies, all of that kind of thing. So those are going to be available for you at the store. And then another cute little gift is these featherweight socks. I mean, how cute is that? They're bright green. It would be really cool if they kind of glowed in the dark with this color. Um, but little featherweight socks are just adorable. So that would be another nice little gift for everybody to get for you to give away. Um, and these little tens are just my favorite. I love storing some of my sewing stuff in tens. So these are nesting tens. It's got sewing things on it. I love these colors. And then buttons on the inside. There's only two boxes. But how cute is that? Just some cute little designs to store everything in. So this next group of projects I have for you is out of this book, the big book of quick to finish quilts. There are 54 fast, fun, and fabulous projects in here. So when I first get a book for So Fun, I'll go through and put all these little sticky tabs on the top of it of things I might wanna make. There were like 18 sticky tabs out of 54. I ended up making 
five or six design projects out of this, maybe seven projects out of this book for you. There's still at least two more in here I really want to make, but I did not have time for that. Um, one of them is, just lost it. There's a really cute, this one is really cute. This turn dash block party quilt, all the colors on it are just amazing. And there's one in here that's all different sizes of flying geese. This thing. Love that. I think it'll just be so cool. I have a lot of 30s fabrics and I really want to make that. So the first one I did is this scrappy Christmas table runner. But I didn't do it with Christmas fabric. Um, my daughter wanted something with Halloween. So I did it with Halloween fabric. I made it a little bit bigger than the directions because I used the charm pack and I had a little bit more fabric left over so I figured might as well use it. So it is a little bit wider than the pattern calls for but it's perfect. Um, you don't want to not use up all of your fabrics. Um, so these are two and a half inch squares that you start with. My charm pack is a five pack so I cut them into fours and then you have lots of little tiny charms or two and a half inch squares I'm sorry. Um, it went together really easy then I just quilted it. Um, I did piped binding because I thought there was a lot of black stuff around the edges and this orange piped binding just really made it pop a little bit. And this was really fun and super quick to make. So it really are, they really are quick to finish quilts. So that's the first one I did. And then my daughter also loves these colors, these teals and grays. So I made her another table runner out of that book. So it's this. Again, super fast, um, really easy to make. Um, I used, these are scraps from a quilt that I made for, so the quilt that's on her couch will match the quilt that is in the dining room, which is a little tiny apartment, almost the same room, so it'll look really good together. And I just quilted it in the ditch, because there wasn't really much you can do with this. And the quilting in the ditch has kind of made the squares pop out. So, and then I did do the binding, sewed it onto the front, flipped it to the back, and I actually did it by hand, which is very rare for me anymore. But I think it turned out really cute and she'll love it, I hope. Then we have this pack of charms for you. It's called Readerville by Maywood Studios. So it's got books, libraries, glasses, um, bookshelves, some cozy couches with reading lamps next to them, all that cute fabric of book stuff. So here's a term pack, and then here is the quilt out of this same book that I made for you. So they have you use fat quarters or fat eighths. Again, since I had a term pack, I just cut my charms into um, charm packs into four pieces instead of one big five inch square so there are lots of two and a half inch squares and made this quilt I it's not quite finished I am going to do a little bit of a red binding around or border around it and then the blue and that'll be perfect um, I did not have quite enough fabric this is supposed to be a double border of this checkerboard stuff I did not have quite enough fabric for that so I just made it one border the math still worked out so it's fine I'm not sure what I did wrong, but when in the book, these squares lined up with these, so everything continued the pattern around. Somehow mine did not, and I didn't know what I was doing wrong. So I just did a big square here, and it works perfect. No one's going to know it's not quite what the book had. But I love the quilt. Using a charm pack makes it go really fast. Um, what I did was cut my charm packs in half and did two and a half by five inch pieces. And then I sewed the background fabric to that two and a half by five inch piece and then cut those in half. So you didn't have to sew all of the two and a half inch squares together. So it was a little bit more strip piecing. Um, it makes it go faster. But it turned out really cute and I really love it. Then the first quilt I made out of that book is this one here.
and this is like my new favorite one, almost second favorite one. So how pretty is that? These are all grunge fabrics, which we have at our stores. Um, this is a moda marble, which we have. We don't have all of these colors at all the stores, but we had enough that I could make it work. Um, this was easy to make. Just if you have a design wall, it's going to make it a whole lot easier. You do have to lay everything out to make sure you get the pattern going across correctly. Um, they have in the book, the quilt is only 46 inches big, 46 inches square. I had leftover fabric, so I made it a little bit bigger. Um, and when you're making a quilt that's 46 inches square, you guys know fabric is about 40 to 42 ish inches wide. So you're like, well, I'm going to have a four inch strip down the middle side of my quilt of a little bit of fabric to add onto it. So that just drives me crazy. What they do for their backing is make one of these blocks and put that down with a little bit of um, design, put that down the side of the backing. And that is how you make up for your fabric not being quite wide enough for it. So that is a really great idea to put some of your blocks onto the back and make your backing big enough, use up some of your scraps and make it big enough for your quilt. So this is also out of the big book of quick to finish quilts. So this quilt is made with, I don't remember what size these squares were, but they're all, as you can see, half square triangles, most of them. So an easy way to do those half square triangles is with this Riley Blake seems so easy, cute little flower thing. So you put this is the opening where your feed dogs go this is your center line where your needle goes if you're doing a quarter inch seam on each side it's on this side of each so you just put this on and you line your fabric up with this line and by the time you get it to the needle it's where it's supposed to go it's kind of like thingles but it's a cute little riley blake thing and i love riley blake stuff then if you wanted to do some flowers you have a nice little template also so and these all of these markings here are great for all of your other seams that are quarter or um, diagonal seams and stuff you're doing. So a really nice little tool that you can use when you're doing all your half square triangles. Um, I actually use my new Icon 2 for a lot of my half square triangles. It has that projector line. Amazing. If you haven't seen it, talk to somebody about it. You would love it. So, but that's, oh, and I have one more project out of this big book of quilts. this big pillow form they had you make a little like a 20 inch pillow I just did one of the kids rooms put a bed in there for a spare bedroom um, and this is the pillow sham for that bed so instead of being 20 inches I just did a big sham on it um, love the little flowers along the edges cute as that and then I had a couple extra flowers I wasn't counting when I was cutting so I just thought it'd be really cute to add this on here I just made it a pillow flap thing on the back, did the flange, and it just turned out easy. It is a little boring sewing up all of these little squares. They are one inches when they're all done. Um, you do strip piece them, but it's still a little boring. Um, and then quilting them is just as boring because you're just going across all these lines, but it looks really cute when it's done, so it's worth the boringness. So this will decorate the bed in a couple of weeks. So this next project I have is by Chalk and Notch Patterns. It's this called the Fringe Dress and Blouse. So I made the dress. This is out of a rayon batik, and I just love how it turned out. Um, I've already went, worn it twice. I wore it to my daughter's college graduation. The kid is done with school finally. And then I also wore it to a wedding we went to. Um, but it's nice and airy, has a little belt on the back. Um, it, it took very little time to sew it out. Um, it just turned, went together really easily. I made this size, I think 14. I don't recall, but I'm pretty sure it was the 14. Um, this pattern has sizes zero through 30. So it'll fit pretty much everybody. I use Swedish tracing paper to trace out the size I need so that you don't have to cut up into your pattern and not be able to use it again. Um, but I just think it turned out adorable. I loved wearing it. Um, I didn't even with this fabric 
didn't even have to line it so you don't have to have a slip on it but it just turned out really cool and really nice and breezy the rayon is good for summertime you won't melt in it so really cute little outfit so this next project I have is called easy does it three yard quilts so I did one of these quilts the last time I did so fun I don't remember when that was um, I love them they are great if you're a beginning sewer don't know how to quilt so easily yet these are great easy patterns to follow if you're an accomplished sewer you can make a bunch of these for charity quilts baby quilts gifts for everybody they're just really fast easy cute quick fat quilts I love the chevron quilt I really debated between doing the chevron quilt and this one for quite a while because I love chevrons um, but I ended up with this one so I wouldn't keep it because I don't need another quilt so I did this one um, one thing when you're doing this quilt is they have you do binding where it's only one layer instead of two that will make the binding wear a little faster and I'm not wild about that if it's going to be a charity quilt so what I did was cut these borders here one inch smaller than they're supposed to be and then you have enough binding to do a regular fold it in half at a two and a half two and a quarter inch strip fold it in half sew it to the front stitch it onto the back and that will make the binding a little bit stronger but last a little bit longer so that's what I did I just cut these borders one inch smaller and did a regular binding you can do it the other way if you want it bigger but either way it works perfect I used up all of the blue fabric and then I still had some of the apricot color and the flowers so I did a little bonus baby quilt so how cool is that you get two quilts out of three inches of fabric I did have this in my stash I'm gonna bind it with this cream background and then you've got two quilts out of three yards of fabric so this will be a nice little baby quilt for somebody um, and I just kind of did the same look as this just a little bit backwards of this because that's the, how the scraps worked out and then just when I got this block done measured how big it was and made the solid block that and I think it just turned out really cute and really fast and easy and a nice little bonus quilt we do have all of these fabrics for you they're from Moda I just love Moda fabrics um, but all the fabrics are here and in one little bundle for you and you can get two quilts out of it if you've cut really good and um, have a little bit of imagination with this book there are eight quilts in here it does tell you how to make quilts in three different sizes so if you wanted to buy a couple of bundles you can make it bigger than this throw size you can make it full or queen depending on how many bundles you buy so it's a good little bundle package thing okay so we have a few more just little things here for you guys so this little tiny book the pocket guide to quilting tips and tricks so it just tells you little they are 80 something 90 something little tips in here for how to measure how to quilt how to do how to pick your fabrics um, picking a project sometimes that's the worst thing you have all this fabric what am I gonna make with it, it gives you some little tips on how to do that so nice little thing you keep it in your purse when you're going shopping I know shop hop is going on right now so put this in your purse go shopping and figure out what you're going to do with everything this is also a great little book quilters pre-cut pre-cut companion it has things you can do with all the different pre-cuts so there are layer cakes jelly rolls valley pops charm packs mini charms um, all those little pre-cuts tells you what to do with these a few different patterns and a few different blocks um, great little book if you need some easy fast quick projects okay so this next project I'm going to show you is called dressed like apron by indigo junction so there is an apron for mommy daughter or son and for their little doll so how cute is that so my niece is probably never gonna see this video so these are for her and her daughter who will be almost three at Christmas time and then her doll I'm thinking this is not gonna fit the baby at Christmas time but she'll grow into it 
um, they do like Disney, as do the rest of us. So I was looking for fabric that was like cupcakes or some sort of cute little fabric. And I have to always walk down the Disney aisle when I'm at the store, and they had this. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is stinking cute. Halloween Disney snacks from the Disney World. So we went with this fabric instead of cupcakes. Um, got this purple and this little bit of orange that I use for the ties from our Littleton store. And these just went together so fast. I did it in one evening. Um, they are lined. And I just used a little bit of fabric that I had at home for the lining. Um, they're lined, so it's just really fast and easy, quick project to make. The back of them is just a little tiny half back so it's not gonna make you too hot when you're cooking. Um, little tiny pockets, I mean, how cute is this little doll pocket? And then mom and everybody else has a pocket too, but just cute and adorable little project for everybody. So that will be a great thing for you to make for everybody too. Then my son's girlfriend said she, I sent everybody a picture, what do you guys want? Cause I don't need any more of this stuff. So she really liked this rad and plaid table decor um, set of, you can make placemats or a table runner. I love table runners better than placemats. So I made this for the kids and I'm like, what color do you want? She was blacks and grays and whites. I'm like, how about, do you want to add a pop of color in there? She goes, no, just blacks and grays and whites. And I'm like, kind of needs a pop of color. No, blacks and grays or whites are fine. So this was a little hard for me to make, but I guess the kid knew what she was saying because these blacks and grays and whites look amazing. So this white flower fabric was supposed to be my background. I was making this during Stanley Cup hockey playoffs. I forgot what I was cutting. So this black um, Moda fabric ended up being my background. Still worked out perfect. I think it looks adorable. There are a lot of pieces when you're cutting this out and all of, all of these fabrics were scraps. I didn't have yardage of anything. Everything was scraps left over from all sorts of other projects. So when you're cutting stuff out, there's A, B, C, D, and I think E fabrics, and then also one, two, three, and four fabrics. Keep track of all that, label it, put it on your design board, and then just pick it up and start sewing. But I think it turned out amazing, even with no colors in it. It turns out really cute, and I hope the kids really like it. So one more thing I have for you is how often do you guys clean your sewing machines? Probably not enough. We've seen some of them come into the store. They need cleaned a little more than you're doing. So this is a really cute brush for cleaning your machine. So it folds up compact, so it'd be great to put in your travel bag of sewing stuff. It is, I think it is a doggy paw. Everybody else says it's a kitty paw. I have dogs, so it's a doggy paw to me. But it's great to brush out all the big fuzzies out of your machine, get it cleaned up, and a clean machine is gonna be happy for you and sew better and last longer. So get a little puppy slash kitty cleaning brush and have a nice clean machine. Like that. So then we have a few quilts here on the back. So this quilt, I think, turned out just adorable. It's called Batty by Running Doe Quilts Villa Rosa Patterns. I love these little patterns. They are like a couple of bucks. So you get a really adorable quilt for a $2 pattern or $2.50 or something like that pattern. Really cool. Um, this thing went together really easily. They have you use one fabric for all of the black pieces. I use three different pieces of black because I'm trying to get rid of some of my fabrics. Um, and I used up all of those pieces. You do a lot of half square triangles. So this is a half square triangle. This here was a half square triangle. Everything's half square triangles. And you just put them together. Make sure you're doing a left side and a right side. I did not. So on one of them, make sure you do a left side, right side, the left wing, right wing. Um, but it went together super fast. I love how it turned out. It is just so adorable. I got this fabric at a little quilt shop in Kansas, this border fabric, and it just turns out really cute on it. I did a piped binding, um, cause it just, sometimes I just don't wanna do binding on the back. Um, so with the pipe binding, it adds a little bit of 
or inch around it and it just it gives a little pop of color and it's just is easier frankly but it still looks really good um, I use some variegated purple and green um, and yellow thread which pulled out all the colors in here and I just think it turned out just adorable so it's the batty pat pattern by Villa Rosa designs so this gathering pattern or quilt here that I made is another Villa Rosa patterns by Sugar Pine Quilt Designs. I saw this panel at one of the merchant, the show down at the Castle Rocks um, event center down over Memorial Day weekend. And I just loved the colors of it, the beach scene. I'm like, I have to have that panel. Um, and then I came home and found a pattern to match it. And I just love how it turned out. Um, so when you're making this quilt, not all panels are the same size. So you really need to watch and do a little math maybe. So my panel was, I have no clue what it was. It was like 40 by 38, um, something like that, 46 by 38. So this whole quilt is only 48 by 60 long, wide, the measurements. So they have you, their quilt ends it like here. I would have had to cut off all of this beautiful design um, or some of my trees. I did not want to do that. So I just added, I did a little bit of math. I added in one more, these are called Delectable Mountains blocks. I added in one more set of blocks and made my spacers in between my blocks a little bit smaller and it worked out perfect. It was very, very easy math to do. Um, and I just love the way it turned out. I just love, love, love this quilt. Um, these blocks are really easy to make. Again, when you're sewing during Stanley Cup hockey playoffs, some things do not go as planned, but it was easy to rip out and sew back together. And it just turned out beautiful. I, this is like my new favorite quilt. Um, so it's The Gathering by Villa Rosa Designs. This quilt I bought from at the merchandise or the event center in Castle Rock, like I said. The shop that I bought it from was from Hawaii. So you'd have to call them and get the panel, but I think it is just beautiful. So um, that's my last quote for you. So thanks for coming. Um, thanks for watching. Remember, you can still see all of these samples in our stores. Um, Littleton, Aurora, Arvada, and Colorado Springs. Um, we are doing classes in the store. You can come by and see them anytime you're interested. And thanks for watching us. Bye-bye.